Six Nations 2024, final game of week three, folks. And the French hangover from the World Cup seems to be continuing. And the Italians will probably not get a better chance to beat France away from home anytime soon. Neither side able to get out on top. 13 points apiece. The Dante red card at halftime. Maybe uh, one of the bigger kind of talking points, but we'll go through it. Some key events and stats from what was a bit of an arm wrestle in Lille. I mean, yeah, France, goodness me, in the first half, they had a stupid amount of possession, even stupider amount of territory. Didn't get that much to show for it. I mean, early on, they did. They did actually score. I mean, the Olive on try, their only try of the game, comes within 10 minutes. Uh, Italy conceding a bunch of penalties, uh, including at scrum time, line-out time. Uh, Olive on managed to get over the line. They had to TMO check it to make sure he hadn't kind of lost control of it, but he'd regathered it before flopping over the line. Woke you with a nice little pop pass, but seven points to nil. France over Italy at home, that's basically going according to the script. France had another big line break from their own half. Jalibert uh, able to kind of, you know, put the hammer down. Um, but they ended up kind of passing it into touch, which was maybe the first indication of a little bit of lacking in that kind of clinical edge from the French side in the first half. It was a golden opportunity, not able to convert. They managed to get three points out of it from a, uh, from a penalty, so... 10-0 after around about 10 minutes. Again, it's going to the script, right? Um, Italy had a chance on 16 minutes, one of their few chances in the first half. They decided not to opt for a three-pointer. They went for touch, and within about three phases, Dante had won a penalty at the breakdown. So not a lot going right for the Italians in the first half in terms of being able to get into the French half and uh, attack. But what was going right for them was their defense that was the thing they were required to do a lot of. I mean, their scrum was getting pinged uh, a lot. They were having to make a lot of tackles. And the French, when they would try these kind of, you know, game-breaking X-Factor plays, they just wouldn't come off. Like, Jelly Bear put a dink through. was too big. The cross kick goes into touch. Um, and then, to be honest, the Italians' decision-making in the first half anyway sometimes left a little bit to be desired. Monte Iwane with a big carry to try and get out of his own 22 gets caught means he has to pass the ball under pressure to Brex, who's not really known for his kicking game. Uh, his kick gets charged down, so under all kinds of pressure, France go close, but still can't quite score. They went 10 phases on 28 minutes. The Italian defense was doing enough. The French got held up on 36 minutes. Uh, that's about when Jalibert had to go off after having had a big tackle put on him a little bit earlier, so... Uh, Ramos went to 10, which maybe made the attack look a little bit more disjointed. But again, they hadn't they hadn't scored more than the one try, which was a forward flopping over the line up until that point anyway. Um, and yeah, before, before half time, the Italians actually managed to get themselves on the board. They had a bunch of phases, um, opted for a three-pointer after Dante had put in a high tackle and got himself yellow carded. So... 10 points to 3 at half time. The French, not a lot to show for their overwhelming amount of possession. They had 59% of the ball, 69% of the territory, which is about as high as you'll like to see between two Tier 1 teams. The Italians have had to make 112 tackles to 51. So, yeah, a lot of defending. But the clean breaks, 2 to 1. Not that convincing from the French. That kind of X-Factor stuff, not really coming. Lamaro has already made 13 tackles in that first half. Start of the second half, referee speaks to the captains. The Dante high tackle, which was basically just head-on-head, head, gets upgraded. High level of danger, so it's a red card. And I write the note. This is the Italians' best chance. Best chance, question mark. Because you've got half a game to play against 14 men, and you're only you know, one score behind. Why not? Why not this be the Italians' day? It starts, though, with a French penalty, so they slot that uh, 13 points to three. If they can stay kind of, you know, a score, scoring a bit ahead, they should be able to see out the game right. The French are, are bound to raise a gear at some point. 
Not really. I mean, Menoncello went close, uh, a little bit kind of reminiscent of more what we saw from the French in the first half. Uh, his little dink and kick through was just a little bit too big. The French coaching staff, maybe seeing a little bit of pressure on the starting guys, decided to ring a bunch of the changes. Um, but yeah, the Italians had more position, more territory. The new props come on for them and win a penalty. So yeah, France going off their feet at the breakdown on... Um, about 60 minutes means it's 13-6. Back to that kind of danger zone territory. Um, and yeah, the Italians, barring a few knock-ons, could have put a little bit of extra pressure on the French, you think. But it was a little bit of a, a flip of the first half. The crowd was unbelievably quiet. Yeah, they they didn't have that much encouraging stuff to really get... To get behind, I suppose, but also maybe sometimes that's when you need the crowd to get behind you, right? To make their, their voices felt, to get the guys up and, and keeping on tackling. But um, yeah, finally, finally the Italians managed to get that try. Uh, it had been kind of coming for a while. You were thinking if they can just get their hands to stick, stop knocking it on, kind of have that bit of composure, they can get it, and they did. Um, some great carries from the likes of Menocello. I think Ioane had a good one in the build-up. Canone had a good one. And then finally, um, Marine's final pass to Capuozzo. The French can't get their hands on it to stop it. Um, the numbers pay. Capuozzo goes over. Great conversion from the sideline from uh, Garbisi as well. So 16 points apiece. 10 minutes to play. What is the French reaction going to be? It's actually not bad. Uh, Pedro looks to take the game by the scruff of the neck with a wee kick and chase, puts the pressure on the Italians. Um, under pressure, they knock it on, so it's a good chance for the French. But Italy win a scrum penalty, um, you know, defensively, so good chance for them to have the last throw of the dice, get themselves into France's half, but they lose the line out. So you're just waiting for that moment for one side to really, to really boss things. I mean, Pedro had a line break from that. Stolen lineup, I couldn't quite get anything from it. Um, and then on 80 minutes, 80 minutes as the French, they didn't want to draw. They're having to run it out their own half. And sure enough, Zuliani gets over the ball, wins his team a very, very, very kickable penalty. Garbisi lines it up. And as that bloody clock kicks, clicks down, ticks down, that's the word I'm looking for. It is... Six in the morning, been up since four. Um, the ball falls off the tee with about 10, 12 seconds to go. The uh, French guys rush up. The ref says you can't charge them. He says, I don't know how much time's left on the clock. So Garbisi forced to hurriedly put the ball back on the tee and go through about two seconds of his kicking routine. Two seconds left, left on the clock. The ball sails towards the sticks and strikes the upright. It's a missed penalty. And uh, then the ball ends up in touch a moment or two later. So, yeah, man. Italy should have won that. Italy really, really should have won that on the balance of that second half. But France should have had more scores in the first half for how dominant they were. So neither side is going to walk away with that one happy. I think, obviously, if you'd offered the Italians a draw before the game... They probably would have taken it. So on the balance of things, they'll certainly be the happier of the two sides. Hence me wearing the Italian jersey. Uh, possession finishes 51-49. Territory finishes 56-44. So a lot more even compared to how it was in that first half when it was all France, right? So uh, Italy have the the better of the numbers in that second half quite clearly. Uh, run meters finished 390 to 431. So the Italians actually end up with more run meters than the French. Penalties conceded as 11 to 12. Very clean, or very clean, very tight. Uh, clean breaks, 4 to 4. Very tight. Run meters, sorry, they did run meters. Um, tackles, 117 to 178. So the Italians still had to make a lot more tackles across the course of the game. Uh, individuals, Jelly Bear had 61 meters, but also a couple of turnovers conceded before he was subbed before half time. Uh, Boudin had 15 from 15 tackles and a good defensive shift. Peno had five defenders beaten, three clean breaks and 57 metres, but couldn't quite get that elusive try. Capuazzo gets the try, 66 metres, beats three defenders. Ioane had almost 100 metres, three offloads. Lamaro and Vincent had 18 tackles, each missed a couple. But yeah, kind of a weird, weird game. Obviously, I think without the red card, France probably see that one out. But 
you've got to give credit to the way the Italians defended for long periods. But also it's troubling how how lacking that clinical edge the French attack still looks. Something we mentioned in the preview. It still doesn't look quite there. Um, and then that Garbisi kick, man. Brutal. Brutal one for him. But that ball just fell off the tee at the wrong time. So, yeah. You guys let us know your thoughts. The French will play Wales away in a couple of weeks. And the Italians will host the Scots. You guys take care. And uh, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.